Welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Andrew Kraft. Live Now, look there at the White House. It's been two days now uh, since President Biden's executive order uh, to deal with the crisis at the southern border has been into effect. We want to talk about its effects. Is it having an effect? That's, uh, of course, we're going to do that with our friend at the Washington Examiner, uh, Anna Giratelli, who covers all things the southern border, and Anna joins us. Um, Anna, do you have me? Yes. All right, uh, Anna, thanks so much for being with us here. Let's talk about some of the fallout uh, from this executive order. Can you tell us if it's having its intended effect here? And what was the intended effect to begin with? Yeah, so the, the order was intended to prevent migrants who come across the southern border illegally from being able to seek asylum uh, if certain thresholds were met. So if more than 2,500 people crossed illegally in a day, uh, it would trigger that, that ban. Uh, and so what we expected was lots of repatriation flights to be going on, uh, taking people back to their countries of origin all around the world. Um, and the, like you said, it, it was put into effect earlier this week and was just starting to be rolled out uh, by Border Patrol uh, across the 2,000-mile southern border. You know, Anna, I wanted to ask, too, um, Bill Malugin at Fox has some reporting, and he says, according to his CBP sources, uh, that Border Patrol apprehended just about 4,000 illegal immigrants between ports of entry at the southern border yesterday. I believe, actually, that was Wednesday here. So he says that's about on par, perhaps a little bit higher than what the averages have been in recent weeks. I know executive orders you know, take some time to have a full-throated effect here. That was just the day after. But is that an indication of how this is going to go, or should we give it some time? No, you really should be seeing things change overnight. Um, you know, you think of previous uh, asylum bans, you know, under Trump, things took place immediately. Uh, and really what I was hearing from Border Patrol agents in San Diego yesterday uh, in Southern California, where they're seeing people from not just Central America and Mexico, but, but the Eastern Hemisphere, Asia, Africa, uh, Europe, all over. Um, is they, they were given instruction after the executive order not to uh, repatriate people, send them back to their home country, not to put them in removal proceedings, but to release them into the U.S. and leave them to the courts, uh, which goes against uh, President Biden's uh, very executive order. You know, Anna, let's get into your reporting a little bit more here, and how does that factor into the executive order? You write that a government document given to federal law enforcement in San Diego following Biden's executive order to keep migrants from seeking asylum in the U.S. advises migrants from all but six of the more than 100 countries in the Eastern Hemisphere be released into the U.S. rather than deported. So that was in the executive order, and it's not being followed? Correct me if I'm wrong here. No, it's not. And just so you understand, yes. So the southern border is divided into nine sectors or regions by Border Patrol. Each chief of each region uh, decides how they're going to not not uh, necessarily, you know, carry it out, but with the resources they have available, with the type of people they see crossing, how they're going to uh, carry out border enforcement. And so in places like the Rio Grande Valley of South Texas, where you have pretty much Mexican and Central Americans crossing, it's very easy to enforce what the president has put into executive order uh, because you already have established flights uh, to repatriate people. For San Diego, it's a really different story when you have people crossing from Jordan, from Uzbekistan, from China, from India. Um, and so what the president had said, what his, his senior administration officials had told me uh, in a call earlier this week was, we have the flights uh, ready to go. We're ready to, you know, be turning people away. No one's going to be able to seek asylum right now. And what we're seeing on the ground is different instructions that the Border Patrol agents are receiving. It's not Border Patrol going rogue and violating the, the Biden's order, uh, but it's certainly, you know, the agents who flagged this for me, they themselves were upset, saying, didn't, didn't we just get an executive order saying we're not supposed to let anybody in? And instead, if you're from 
you know, any of the 100 plus countries in the Eastern Hemisphere, uh, virtually all are going to be released into the country. Oh, wow. You know, Anna, I, I'm curious too, uh, we got new numbers in from CBP during the entire duration of President Biden's administration, total encounters by CBP, 8,051,059. Total apprehensions, almost 7 million. I mean, those numbers are staggering. And then uh, five months to November 5th, Election Day, President Biden issues this executive order. You and I, mere months ago, were talking about whether or not President Biden would take executive action to deal with the crisis at the southern border after the bipartisan border security bill uh, literally blew up in the House and the Senate here. What did you make of the timing of the announcement? I is this a gambit? Is this a quick fix? Will it have an effect? You know, it would seem like something that could have a serious impact if it was being carried out uh, truly. And when I mentioned what I found to Customs and Border Protection, which oversees Border Patrol, uh, I had a CBP official call me today and say, but, you know, we don't have the funding from Congress to carry out this executive order to the extent they're asking. And I said, so you're not going to, you know, you're not going to carry it out then. If you can't fund it, you can't carry it out. So I think that's part of the issue. The president went ahead and did this. Uh, and certainly CBP seems to understand they don't have the resources and the money, the manpower, even if uh, they wanted to, you know, carry out the, the president's executive order. So. It certainly looks like, you know, a, a big thing that he did. He had a full-on press conference at the White House about it. Um, they didn't take questions from media. But then, you know, the next day, nothing's changed on the border. And, you know, we're going to be monitoring this the next couple of weeks. But it really seems like the, the, the temporary decline we've seen in border crossings over the last few months is more to do with Mexico stepping up its own enforcement as oh. well as Texas Governor Greg Abbott uh, pushing people further west across into California. I see. Yeah, that's something I'll be monitoring as well. You know, will the executive order make a material impact on the number of crossings? I mean, will it go down? To your point, though, Anna, it is far down from when I think you and I last spoke. Yeah, I mean, his, here's the thing. Historically, over the past 10 years before Biden, the number of people arrested for crossing the southern border illegally was between 30,000 and 50,000 per month. So a lot of people. Under Biden, we've seen it go between 125,000 and 250,000 every month. So right now, last month, the examiner just yesterday published leaked data from the month of May showing 122,000 arrests in May. Uh, it does seem like, wow, that's a lot better than it has been, but it's still, you know, four, three, four times higher uh, than what we see in average months under Obama or Trump. Yeah, you know, just to distill this even further for our viewers, uh, this very time, Anna, yesterday, we were bringing our viewers the news of a migrant smuggling operation that was busted in Bear County, Texas near San Antonio, the sheriff there in Bear County, Javier Salazar, the day before that, or a couple days before that, was at the White House with President Biden while Biden made this announcement. A reporter asked him about these human smuggling operations. He said even that they have gone down. They haven't seen as many there in Bear County. But I thought the, the juxtaposition of that, uh, that Sheriff Salazar was in Washington with President Biden while he made the announcement, and then two days later, we're bringing the viewers a press conference he's holding uh, on a migrant smuggling operation. Thankfully, uh, everyone survived. There were heat-related injuries here, and, and several were arrested. But that just distills the crisis, does it not? Yeah, you know, it, it's all politics. I mean, the, the Democratic mayor of Eagle Pass, Texas, another border town that's been at the epicenter of this crisis for the first two years, he got a call from the White House saying, we're going to have this press conference announcing this, but we're not inviting you because he's been too outspoken against President Biden the last few years. Uh, and he said, you know, this just looks like politics. It's five months from the election. You know, it, it, it's nothing more than that. And I think you're right. You have to look. You can say whatever you want about your policies being effective or not. But at the end of the day, I think numbers don't lie. Uh, and, and to be at a press conference two days later for a smuggling incident, um, you know, 
I think it also draws the question of are you patrolling as much for smuggling incidents? Is that why there could be a decline in San Antonio? But, but like you said, Andrew, so many factors. Yeah, you know, Anna, just lastly, too, I mean, we, we know what Biden has done this week about the border crisis. We hear former President Trump on the campaign trail talk about, uh, you know, the scourge of illegal immigration. Do you have specifics from the Trump campaign? Is this something you're following? Would we know what a Trump presidency would do to fix the border? Or is it all, you know, perceived rhetoric and bombast and bluster here? Do they have a policy plan in place if they are elected? They haven't formally released it yet, but I okay. think you're going to see a really refined approach to the issue, given that the people in the first administration and, and who have been with Trump the last three, four years that he's been out of office, um, have really had a chance to sit back and think, okay, what did we do the first four years? What would we like to do the, the next four if elected, and how could we do it better? So I think you're really going to see a very calculated attempt at this time we didn't see border wall go up until year three of Trump. Right. Um, so I think, you know, they've gotten, hopefully, um, they've, they've, they've spent more time thinking about what they want to focus on and carry that out. But we, but we do have yet to see exactly what uh, Trump 2.0 White House would look like in terms of the border. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and we welcome the specifics once the, the plan is released. Anna Giratelli with the Washington Examiner. Thanks so much for your time. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Andrew.